Welcome to Rethinking Trade with Lori Wallach, a podcast that unpacks international trade and how it affects you without putting you to sleep. Welcome to Rethinking Trade with Lori Wallach. I'm Lori Wallach. Today, we're actually doing a special breaking news edition of Rethinking Trade. That's because today, China filed a case against the United States at the World Trade Organization, attacking the electric vehicle policies that the Biden administration passed as part of the Inflation Reduction Act. The Inflation Reduction Act is a somewhat off-theme name for what is, in fact, the United States' most monumental climate policy investment. The bill puts a lot of money and tax benefits into incentivizing a shift to less carbon-emitting energy sources from electric vehicles to solar energy to heat pumps for air conditioning and heating. And it works on two levels. It gives manufacturing incentives for people to invest in creating new factories to make these things. So the batteries that go into electric vehicles, the assembly of electric vehicles, that's on the supply side. And on the demand side, it gives tax credits to us consumers so that a lot of people can buy electric vehicles or a lot of people can get solar on their houses, etc. And these are two elements of what is called industrial policy. One is to have more resilient sources of these critical products that are going to be essential for our security and safety in the future. And number two, to save the damn planet. So this combination of goals is delivered by this set of policies. And one of the elements of how it's implemented in the name of trying to create some redundant supply chains, including here, it also is good for economic justice because we'll create some of those middle class manufacturing jobs that we lost 5 million plus of with our boneheaded past trade policies. So all this is to say, this is a great policy and it's thoughtful. And if it is implemented as it was written, could really make a difference for climate, for economic justice and a lot of communities left behind because friends, almost 60% of Americans in the workforce do not have a college degree, are not going to get a college degree. They can make great things if we make things here again, and we need to make things here again, as we learned the hard way during COVID when we couldn't get the basics because we no longer could make the most basic things. So for the planet, for economic justice, for our national security, these policies are great, except China is saying, just one minute, these policies don't comply with the old World Trade Organization rules. And those rules are from the mindset of the neoliberal 1990s, which helped concentrate production in just one or two countries. And by the way, those rules don't discipline a lot of the subsidies that, oh, surprise, China's using right now to try and corner the electric vehicle market. So all around the world, countries are taking trade actions against China on electric vehicles. Europe is already six months ahead of us doing what's called an anti-dumping subsidies case. China is using all kinds of subsidies that the WTO rules don't directly cover. And it's stuff you can do when you're basically a single party authoritarian government. So you can just throw all the people off the land and give it to a factory. Or you can decide this is EV city and we're throwing all the people for, you know, 20 square miles off the land and we're going to just make a bunch of EV battery plants here. Or You can basically subsidize the transportation or you can subsidize the actual minerals themselves because the government goes and buys up a bunch of mines in Africa. So there are all of these ways that the Chinese EV monopolization worldwide is starting to be fought back against by countries. The U.S. hasn't done the sort of dumping strategy of trade enforcement. Instead, we've just gone forward and said, we're going to make it here, too. And that is what China is attacking. And specifically, the case today is China is attacking particularly the tax credits. The tax credits for consumers, you can get a lot of money back, almost $10,000 of the purchase of an electric vehicle, if the thing is assembled in North America is half of it, or 
if the other half, if the battery is made of minerals that are mined, assembled, recycled, etc., in North America or countries where the United States has already a standing free trade agreement with the country, which we do with a bunch of countries like Chile and Australia that happen to have a lot of those critical minerals. China's been trying to corner the market on those critical minerals. There's actually a very famous WTO case that our current trade representative litigated when she was in the general counsel's office of the WTO on this very issue. Basically, the United States and lots of other countries need to actually make redundant sources of these kind of batteries. It's bad for resilience to just have one country producing it all, but it's also not great for security when that one country is China. So bottom line is China is very ironically, I would say downright perversely, going to the WTO whose intent of no government involvement in the market, no government subsidies, China breaks left, right, and upside down, is trying to use those rules to try and actually get the way in which the U.S. is trying to do with a lot less of the behind-the-scenes subsidies like happened in China and a lot more of the upfront, yep, we'll give you a tax credit for this if you Americans want to buy it, and yep, we're going to incentivize development of other supply chains, not just in the U.S., but, you know, North America in the region or in countries you already have these partnerships with. We will wait and see what happens. However, to ruin the end of the movie here, and I don't have to give a spoiler notice because this is publicly known, the United States basically derailed the sanctions part of WTO enforcement. So the WTO used to be the only enforceable global law where one country could attack another country's laws in front of a tribunal of three trade wonks, and then the three trade wonks, which are mostly dudes, I will say the three trade wonk dudes could (laughs) basically order trade sanctions, billions of dollars of penalties against a country unless and until it dumped the domestic law that the WTO said violated the rules. That, ladies and gentlemen, is why in your grocery store, you no longer see the country of origin labeling on meat. That for many years in our grocery stores, U.S. law required it said where the critter was born, raised, and slaughtered. That was a WTO violation. That tribunal said, nope, can't do that. Here are going to be hundreds of millions of dollars of sanctions. And the U.S. chickened out and dumped it. Chickened out, get it? Then there are the rollbacks of the Marine Mammal Protection Act, the Endangered Species Act, Clean Air Act, same kind of thing. But... After these WTO secretive tribunals kept overreaching and making up new policies and slapping countries with sanctions, the U.S. ultimately, after trying to fix that over decades, said, we're done, and stopped appointing the judges that are needed to put in the sanctions. So that whole process is basically on ice. So it's a little bit doubly perverse that China's going to the WTO, a place whose intent it violates all the time, and whose sanction machine is now at least indefinitely broken. So there you have it, friends, a big case filed today by China against the United States for its industrial policy about producing, planet saving, job creating, redundancy and resilience manufacturing, electric vehicles and their batteries. And it is a really interesting strategy, pretty damn perverse. And at least for the moment, can't result in sanctions. Let's hope it stays that way. I will keep you updated on this case as it develops, but it's kind of a big honking deal, so I want to let you know what it all meant. Until the next time, thanks for tuning in. We'll have a regular episode of Rethinking Trade with a Guest coming up soon. You know when that happens. It's Fridays. But this is news happening now, so we're breaking the Fridays rule with a special edition of Rethinking Trade with Lori Wallach.